everyone, it's Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and welcome to my channel. If you're new and welcome back if you are a continued viewer. I really appreciate your presence here today. I'm a Depression era child. My dad was born in 29 during the largest stock market crash in history and my mom was born in 31 during the Depression. So today you're probably here hoping to pick up some new tips and tricks, maybe even some motivation to live frugally. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I know a lot of times we get into the idea of, I wanna treat myself, I work so hard. What about treating yourself to financial security, stability, not having to worry about the inflation and all of the crises that are going on right now when you go to the grocery store trying to figure out how to stock your food and buy your food for your family. These are things that we deserve. These are things that we should not have to worry about. And living frugally does that for us. And I hope that you can see the benefits in that as we go through this video. First of all, you have to find out what matters to you. Are you looking for that stability? Are you looking to pay off your mortgage, pay off your car? Are you looking to put some money back in case there's an emergency or save for a trip, save for a wedding? Write down what the reason is that you are working towards. That helps so much to help you keep your focus as you're going forward. I do not stockpile food, but I have more than enough. Back in 1983, when there was just my husband, an infant that I was breastfeeding in cloth diapers, and myself, our budget was $30 a week for food. Now it is only $61.25 a week for two of us in 2023, which I think is still pretty darn good, and that includes all of our household items. But I only have a very small box freezer and one refrigerator. A lot of people have extra refrigerators, extra freezers. I do live in the country. I live rurally, which means I do not go shopping that much but I look for those bargains and I put those back for when we need them. I don't believe in paying the extra electricity to have all that stuff plugged in just to store food for two of us. I do also have pantry items as well, but I try to keep my electricity as low as possible because I feel like that's just me getting my paycheck and handing it to someone else. So I don't want to have, um, I don't want to be paying someone just to be able to store my food. So in figuring out what matters, look at everything. Look at your schedules, look at your time, look at your money, look at all of that and decide what is the most important to you. Is it important to you to work less and have more time or work more and have more spending power? A lot of people would rather work more to have more spending power. I personally would rather have more time and less spending power because I feel like I can make up the difference in my time, in my creativity, in my frugality, and still have a quality of life without having to spend all of my waking hours working. Look at your purchases. Look at your non-essential items that you're buying. Look at using and reusing things, upcycling things. A lot of times when we are just too busy, we forget to look at those things that could actually be saving us money because we get stressed and we're just looking for the easiest way out. We look for the easiest thing to get through from point A to point B and we forget about what is essential. We look at all of these convenience items and we just snatch them up because we know that they'll make our lives easier, quicker. We don't have to think about it. But if we put a little thought into that, we don't have to buy those items to begin with and we can make other items work in their place. So first of all, you have to decide what is plenty? What is enough for you? I see some preppers that have their entire garage full of food. And I always think, man, it would be so cumbersome to have to rotate all of that and keep a list of all of that and keep all of that in your mind when you're stocking. And I look at that as a lot of my money is just sitting there on the shelves and that money is not usable. And I know a lot of people don't look at it like that, but I have enough stored back that I do not worry about us going a month or two without food. We've got enough stored back for that. So think about 
how much money you have tied up in other things that are constantly keeping your money tabled where it's not accessible. For instance, I talked the other day about making my own creamer. Creamer is up to $2.65 for the off-brand at Aldi's right now. So I'll share that video up above, but just doing little things like this that will save you maybe a dollar and a half each time that you would have normally bought creamer will add up and they do make a difference. Plus, if you keep those things on hand to make the creamer, you don't ever have to worry about running out. And so those things are just little comforts to you that keep you from making hasty decisions, that keep you from making bad decisions because you're in a hurry and it's just easier to grab that bottle of creamer. Reuse that bottle. So what does it feel like when you have enough, when you have plenty? It is relaxing, it is comforting. You don't have to worry. So many things in this life cause us to worry about everything. We worry about our housing, our food, our families, our car starting in the morning. So take off some of those worries by planning ahead and living frugally so that you don't have to worry about every single thing. It really lightens your load emotionally, it lightens that stress, and it makes it easier for you to make good decisions. The number one rule in frugality is just not to waste anything. Don't let anything go down that garbage disposal, in that trash bag, or out that back door without you thinking about, can I use this for something else, and will it save me money? The soothing, feeling that you get from living frugally takes that monkey off of your back. All of those stresses, all of those worries, all of those bills that are due lessen when you know that you can be frugal and that you can figure it out and you can make it through. Go through the things that you already have. So many of us have things stuck back that we don't remember that we have whether it's bar soaps from a hotel that you can use instead of buying that next bottle of soft soap, extra deodorant, extra toothpaste that you forgot you had. Go through those travel bags. Check those cabinets in your bathroom. Check those cabinets under your sink where maybe you stuck back something extra and then forgot you had something extra. All of these things that you can take off of your shopping list for the next time or two, they all add up. And so many of us have these things we've forgotten about that really can add to our budget. So I encourage you to go through your things. Not only does it keep you busy so you are not ordering something or buying something or rebuying something, but it also opens up those ideas of, hey, can I use this for something else? What can I do with this? Can it save me money? Can I upcycle it? Can I use it in a different way? Now that you're thinking like that when you're decluttering, it is a great way to be able to save money as you're going through your items. Sometimes I even run across those little bottles of conditioner from when I've stayed at a hotel, and I think, well, that's one more squirt of conditioner that I don't don't have to use and I've had this in my travel bag so just pull out those little things and start using what you have and see the difference decluttering leads to more frugal motivation as you're going through these things and finding things that you can use and things that maybe will keep you from buying something on the next shopping trip it just motivates you in more ways to be able to save money because you see that you have plenty, you have more than enough, you have things you don't remember that you had, and you have things that you can use now. That motivation is what keeps that frugality fire burning. And it also keeps you from not wanting to buy more stuff. If you start going under the cabinets and going through all of your stuff, you realize you have plenty and that you don't need to be bringing any more unwanted, unneeded items into your house. And that makes a huge difference in transforming your thinking into living a more frugal life. 
So I encourage you to go through something today that you haven't thought about for a while. Maybe that travel bag. Let me know what you find and let me know what you won't have to buy on your next shopping trip. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.